sometimes I have to re-familiar my familiar. Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. <laughs> if you are new here, then I'm Shelly and I really love reading, especially big books. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about those really big, really intimidating books. So if you also like reading and you like quite large books, um, behemoths of a thing, then I would encourage you to subscribe, stick around, hang out every once in a while. And with that, let's just go ahead and jump into the meat of this video. As with every good conversation here on booktube, it always starts with a tag or it gets weaponized into a tag. I'm going to like de-weaponize. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to make it, I'm going to make this a safe space here with um taking a tag and turning it more into the conversation that I want to have. I first saw this conversation um, gets kind of brought up again. The mammoth conversation does go around booktube. If you don't know what a mammoth is, I feel like I'm <laughs> talking in code here. If you don't know what a mammoth is, um, according to booktube terms, it is any book 800 pages or more. I am going to be using the term mammoth quite loosely as I'm like peeping around at my books. Um, some of them make the 800 page standard and some probably just feel like 800 pages or more. And I saw this conversation kind of get, get kicked back up with the channel Stalking Kafka, which I would really recommend. Um, great, great channel, really lovely vibes over there. And I was just really glad to see someone bring up the big book conversation again. And then I saw it get recirculated on my friend Sandy's channel at Miss Reads A Lot. And so I would encourage you to subscribe to these channels and I will leave them linked down below. Okay, so I'm gonna actually start with the books that I read, mammoths that I read and loved last year. Nothing is in order, so you know, <laughs> bear with. So last year I read and enjoyed War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. At the time, I think this is one of those that I've, in retrospect, thought about more than I ever expected. Um, and it is set, let me think, sometimes I have to re-familiarize myself with what's going on or what happened in the book. So War and Peace talks about the impact of the Napoleonic era in Russia. And it is told from two kind of perspectives that not actual people that we're following. We're following like being out on the battlefield and what it means to be a Russian going out to war and what that feels like. And you get a lot of Tolstoy's musings about history and war and um, just how disorganized sometimes and chaotic it was. And then we also get the this like aristocracy, this very like highfalutin um, upper crust of society type of um, narrative in which, you know, the women are um, wanting to get married and they have crushes and how they're dealing with the news of war. And so you have these two um, sort of different uh, ways of looking at this time period and both are illuminating in their, in their own ways. And again, it's one that's stuck with me. There are certain moments in this book that really have been ingrained into my memory. So I'm really glad that I, I read this. Another book I read last year that was long, it makes, it's like just barely over 800 pages and it was fan freaking tastic and it is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. This is a Booker winning, award winning, a Booker, it won the Booker, the year was eligible. Um, Eleanor Catton was the young, is was and still is or holds the title of being the youngest Booker winner um, to date and I think she was 28 when she won this. This is a mystery um, it's a murder mystery. We're following the gold rush in New Zealand. That's right, in 1866. And so we're following this gold rush and there's been a murder and there's gold missing. And in her own very mesmeric and sort of strange way, she tells you a story that is both a murder mystery but that is also like seeped in incredible character development. It ends up being something I 
completely didn't expect. It was so brilliant. It's also connected to the lunar cycle, though that wasn't what really hooked me and I'm not really into astrology or anything like that. So I think if you were, it would be an extra layer of delight. But for me, just the way that it was written, the way that it played out, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. You probably want to know how long these books are. So War and Peace comes in at 1,358 pages. Quite the chunkster. The Luminaries comes in at 830 pages. Prior to 2022, and probably my favorite mammoth of all time, um, and it stands as one of my favorite books uh, of all time, is Hanya Yanagihara's A Little Life, which tells the story of four friends, but slowly focuses in on a single friend in that friend group and the trauma of his life. It is one of the most engaging and immersive reads I've ever read in my entire life. Just gorgeous. This copy of A Little Life comes in at 814 pages. Weirdly, I don't, I don't know how, but I've already read quite a few mammoths this year. I don't, it's not on purpose. It's just the way that my mood has, has been going. And the first mammoth I fin finished and loved, like, mm, mm, so good, so good. And it is Middlemarch by George Eliot. This edition comes in at 838 pages. This tells the story, we're following several couples in a lot of ways, um, individuals who end up pairing up. And it is the story of both the town of Middlemarch and beyond. It is about everything and oh I love it so much. Okay but really it follows, I think it, we could easily say, I could easily say that the main character is Dorothea who is very idealistic as she enters into a marriage um, with someone who is several years her senior and much to her dismay and slow realization, she is very, very, very unhappy in that marriage. And it is, you know, the, ch the changes we go through, the truths that we come to reckon within ourselves. And it is about that and so much more. Beautiful, incredible, amazing, amazing novel. It's my magic, it's magic. We had some trouble. We're back now, I'm back now. <laughs> I have a little guest he's playing so we'll see we'll see how it goes but the next book I finish um, this year I believe it's the next one was bone by Jeff Smith this is a 1332 page graphic novel that was published over several years in installments it was a lot of fun <laughs> this is one of the books that sat on my shelves for years before I picked it up and I was so glad that I finally read it and it's, it's a true adventure story, very episodic and an enjoyable read. Ultimately, the, the bone cousins, these little dog-like creatures get um, chased out of Boneville and from there, the adventure starts. Go find some monies and then you can put it in there, okay? The mammoth following Bone was the January 6th report, which was a special report put together by a special committee here in the U.S. to investigate what happened um, January 6th of 2021 when the insurrection happened here um, uh, at our, our capital um, during the tr tr supposed but not didn't end up being the peaceful transition of power between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And it is it is an important read. I will leave the document linked down below. It is a scathing report against Donald Trump. Um, and it was really interesting to have, you know, read something that- Mom, you can have this Oh, one. oh okay. Well, do you wanna put monies in it then? I think I was gonna say it was interesting oh. to read something that was so relevant in our lives today. I believe the report came in a little under 800 pages, so it was like 735 pages or something like that. I wanna see inside. Okay, come here. Here. Oop, I can't open it now. Oh no, oh no. After the January 6th the report, I picked up Donna Tartt's The Goldfinch, which comes in at 962 pages. I did this as a, as a buddy read with Ann Novella, and I really loved it. I thought it was a brilliant, 
novel. I think her and I are supposed to talk about it. Um, so if we end up doing that, I will leave our conversation linked down below. But just know as like in brief, um, I loved the conversation about art. I love the main character and actually all the main character and the supporting actors, they were all great. Um, and it was just a, a fascinating and philosophical read that I didn't expect to love, to be honest with you. We're going to look at all the mammoths on my TBR, the ones that I actually pulled, um, because I own a lot of mammoths and I just want to read all the long barks, okay? Like, it's, it's something I truly, truly enjoy, truly adore. I love sinking into a good long buck. And we're going to start with the shortest of my long books, okay? Um, which is, you know, still quite long. And we're going to, it's, you know, Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I think why this is top of mind is because Steve Donahue, Micah Cummins, and Anne Novella all recently had a conversation about this, talking about how good it was. And I'm like, I'm going to join the party. So I'm definitely getting um, the fear of missing out FOMO from, from that conversation. This comes in at 624 pages. It seems like it should be so much longer, but it's not. So let's see, um, Herman Melville's Moby Dick is 624. Ooh, I think I have a book that comes in, ooh, even shorter than that. Okay, so it's 603 pages, perhaps the shortest book on this mammoth TBR, is going to be The Histories by Herodotus. This is an ancient, um, ancient book. I have set up the task of reading this this year. Um, it's on my 23 books or my my 23 classics for 2023. Would love to read it. Haven't gotten to it yet. Maybe since it's only 603 pages, it won't be as, I mean, it's a little less intimidating than the, like, I thought it was at least 700 or in the upper 600s. So knowing that it's like 100 pages less than I thought, maybe it'll, maybe I'll, it'll inspire me to pick it up. The next shortest <laughs> book know why I'm doing it this way. Um, I guess this is my this is the way I'm investigating. So um, this is the way that it's unfolding. That's fine. It's going to be uh, the Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas, and it, it comes in right at 700 pages if we excluded all the notes and such, which is which is what I do. So as far as the pure text, the pure story, <laughs> it is just it's um you know it's actually not as long as I maybe once thought but yeah 700 pages here if I were to guess if I were to guess I think the next shortest one is actually the priori of the orange tree this thing is a brick I'll show you it's a total brick compared to something that this is an NYRB actually let's let's do a class like um, let me grab middle March a penguin classic you know if you were in literate if you were in any kind of like English literature class at least um, at least in the school that I went to, they always had us buy Penguin Classics as the book. But like, if you can see just how much bigger Priori of the Orange Tree is and how much thicker <laughs> it is, and actually Middle March is a shorter, I mean, Middle March is longer than Priori. Um, I don't, I just don't know why they decided to make it so big and just so... I don't know, brick-like? I mean, truly, you could stop a door with this. It's just so big. And this comes in at 804 pages. This is a fantasy novel, and I've heard it's amazing. It's very, like, East meets the West, and um, it's supposed to be great, but I just, again, I'm sort of baffled at, like, the decisions of the publishing industry. Unless I wanted it to stand out, for which it does, both on my shelves and in my memory, for being chunky, but not as chunky as it would seem. From from here, it's really like a guessing game as far as the shortest read, but um, this is the Stru, uh, Strudelhoff Steps. This is by um, Himento van Dother, and this comes in a little, it's at 840? Eight, um, give me one moment. So this comes in at 839 steps. I know this is, steps. This, this comes in at 830. I can't even remember now. Can y'all tell I worked today? Okay, yes, 839 pages. And I know that this is set in Vienna. 
supposed to be sweeping and you know giving us all the things that big books like to give us but I don't know a lot about it I just know this publisher is one that is really good about reprinting um, sort of forgotten classics um, they're choosy about what they print and when I saw this at a used bookstore I was like that sounds interesting <laughs> and I picked it up I'm highly influenced okay I'm highly influenced especially if it's a big book I feel like it's made just for me Ooh, okay so this next one doesn't quite make it a thousand pages but I do think I love the cover of this I don't know I find it very striking and it is Ducks Newburyport by Lucy Ellman which is a stream of consciousness novel and we are set in the mind of a very anxious person and this comes in at um, 988 pages I'm nervous about this because I don't know I just I feel a little intimidated by the style. I have read some Marcel Proust um, in Search of Lost Time. I own my, the household, they're Ted's copies, but we, we as a family own several copies of in, in Search of Lost Time. I think we own three, if you don't count the Kindle version. So um, yeah, and that's stream of consciousness um, style writing. And it's a, it's a good book. I mean, the, the first one, Swan's Way, for which I didn't even finish. I mostly read all of the section of Swan and Love and it was hard. It was tough back then to like get through it. I think I would do better now um, as the reader I am now, but back then it was just, I was on the struggle bus with that particular read. So I'm nervous about Lucy Elman, but I've heard amazing things about it, about, you know, Dex Newburyport. Oh, okay. So I was, I was a little bit off. I would have thought that um, Henry Fielding's the History of Tom Tom Jones, A Foundling. I would have thought that this was longer than Ducks Newburyport, but Ducks is like more than 100 pages longer than uh, Henry Fielding. So I have quite literally no idea what this is about. I just know that Steve Donahue recommended it, which is truly my downfall. Steve don't recommend any mammoths to me because they will be immediately going into my cart and it's really hard for me to like exercise self-control from there. Um, but this book comes in at 875 pages. These last three, it's a toss up. Okay, I think, I think this is gonna be the third longest book on my TBR, my unread books. And that is um, Don Quixote by Cervantes. So let's think, let's see what this is about. Let's see how long it is rather. Oh, 982 pages. Okay, so Ducks Newburyport beats out Don Quixote by six pages, y'all. Hmm, that's so fascinating. Okay, so we're gonna put, I'm gonna actually put this, and this is gonna go here, Don Quixote, and then we're gonna do Lucy Elman. We're just gonna stop with that, because like, maybe I'll just do like top four. Okay, so the next one, oh, I don't know. Which one do you think? We've got The Count of Monte Cristo and A Suitable Boy. I think we're gonna do, I'm gonna try The Count, which was a gift from my husband um, for Christmas. And I'm glad, because I've heard it's a really fantastic adventure story. So The Count of Monte Cristo comes in at 1,243 pages. Oh, that's a, that's a big boy. So maybe that's the third longest, I mean the second longest. I feel kind of smug about this, <laughs> like, like I know the longest book on my TBR because I was right. And at coming in at 1,472 pages is A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth, which is about, um, I said, you know, the heart of it, it's about, you know, who is the main character, our main female going to marry. Um, but the, it's that and so much more. I mean, it has to be, right? <laughs> it's like almost 1,500 pages. So, yeah, but I wanted to check something because I was like, oh man, Daniel Deronda, that looks chunky. Nope, no, 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 no. This is only like a little over 700 pages. No, no, George Eliot. No, you do not get that title. 
a couple more, a couple more books that I didn't quite think of, but I'm like, maybe they'll make it, oh, oh, this is longer than I thought it was. So coming in at 858 pages is going to be Larry McMurtry's Lone, Lonesome Dove. Oh, wow. Okay. 800 at 888, at 880 pages, we have The American People, Volume 2, The Brutality Effect. And this is by Larry Kramer, um, which tells the story about the AIDS epidemic. Okay. So, you know, but let's think the top four would be the top it would be in this order my top longest books longest you know unread books would be wow this is heavy <laughs> okay Don Quixote Duck's Newburyport um The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas and um A Suitable Boy so that is, these are the, the chunkiest books on my TBR. And yeah, that's it. Oh wait, I wanted, there was, oh, so you would think, Harry, you would think that with all these unread mammoths, I wouldn't want any more, but I actually, I'm going to go one step further and share with you my, my wish list of mammoths. The ones that I have tucked away in the back of my mind that I will pick up one day. Um, the first one is Kristen Laver and Statter, and this is by Sigrid Unstet. 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 Okay, we're not we're not doing that. Um, both my my friends um, Sandy, who I previously mentioned, and Sonia, who is just a, a wonderful community member here on BookTube. They both read it together and we we talk every day. I talk, I talk every day with those two ladies and they talked about how much they enjoyed it. Like that it was just like, it was interesting to listen to the evolution of their thinking with this book because they both kind of started off and they were unsure and then it seemed like it, they hit a stride. They were really enjoying it. And I was like, I want to read that. Kristen Laverne Satter is uh, 946 pages. And then I have House of Government by Yuri, I have my phone here, by Yuri Slezkin, which comes in at 1123 pages. It's a nonfiction um, book talking about, what is it talking about? It's talking about the Russian Revolution and the, his, the formation of the Soviet Union. That's one that I've, I've thought about a couple of times picking up. But, you know, I don't know when I'm going to be in the mood or we'll have the time for an 1100 page book about the Russian Revolution. But it does sound really interesting. Like it does sound like something I would read and enjoy. I feel bad sharing this wish list knowing that I have so many mammoths here. But another one that cycles in and out of my thinking is Life and Fate by um, Va Vasily Grossman. And I've heard this is like a, a, a war and peace type story um but set in the 1960s um again talking about the soviet union and among other things and this is a 908 page book and then i have also red comet by heather clark this is the definitive biography of sylvia plath at this time and it comes in at 1185 pages so you know just a, another uh, easy breezy reading on my list. And then we'll, we'll stop with a kind of a, a short, a short read, something that doesn't even qualify as a, ma a mammoth, but one that I've, I've thought about several times, um, especially in the last few months, it's been getting a little bit of buzz here and there. And it is Fane by Anne-Marie McDonald. Um, my friend Frazier recently read this and really enjoyed it and was like, I think you should go in blind or as blind as you can. Meaning like, I don't, I shouldn't know a ton about it. But the way that he described it was really interesting and um, the, the minimal things he said about it I was like that sounds like a Shelley book as all of these do I'm tempted so hard by mammoths but yeah um, and that comes in at 734 pages but yeah so that is it these are all of my mammoths that I could gather in the few minutes I took to gather these mammoths up um, what is the longest book on your unread book list otherwise known as your to be read your tbr um let me know i would love to know have you read any of these are there ones that you would gently encourage me to pick up i would love to know that and yeah that's it that's it for me so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and for spending this time with me i really appreciate it and i will see you all in my next one bye